what is a VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. But let's break that down in a way that actually makes sense. Think of VPNs like a secret tunnel. Normally, when you browse the internet, your data is on an open road. Your internet service provider, websites, and even other people on a public Wi-Fi network can see exactly what you're doing. But when you use a VPN, it's like driving through a secret tunnel that nobody from the outside of the tunnel can see what you're doing inside of that tunnel or where you're coming from. A VPN connects your device to a secure server somewhere else in the world and hides your real location. Instead of showing websites your actual internet IP address, a VPN makes it look like you're browsing from wherever the VPN server is located. So why do you need a VPN? VPNs are everywhere in corporate America. Companies use them to let remote workers securely connect to systems from anywhere. But outside of work, immigrants, travelers, and remote workers use VPNs for all kinds of reasons. Expats and travelers might use a VPN to watch shows on Hulu or Amazon Prime while traveling to Mexico. Connecting to a VPN server in the States would make it look like you're in the States letting you access your favorite streaming shows that'll be blocked in another country. When people use a public Wi-Fi network at a coffee shop or an airport, VPN encrypts your traffic, making sure nobody else can see what's going on with your connection on that same network. Remote workers may use their own personal VPN to keep their location private. Imagine this, a real estate agent on vacation in Cancun needing to close out a big deal. Without a VPN, they can't access the Georgia MLS system because that system is restricted to only people in the state of Georgia. Well, with the personal site-to-site -site VPN, accessing the Georgia MLS system would be no problem because they're extending their home internet. Now, there are many different types of VPNs and not all VPNs are created the same. As I said earlier, companies use VPNs to allow remote workers to connect back to work systems. And they include clients like the Cisco AnyConnect, Global Protect, Zscaler, or even the 40 client as examples. These corporate VPNs typically connect back to a firewall or VPN concentrator and may be always on or persistent or activated on demand when you need them. They also typically use two-factor authentication apps on your mobile phone like Dual Mobile, Microsoft Authenticator, or even Ping ID for extra security. Now, public VPN services are the most popular choice for consumers like you and I. These VPNs are the ones you see advertised like NordVPN as an example. Typically, these public VPN services will charge you a monthly or annual subscription fee. They will have clients for all of your devices from Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and even Linux. And the benefit of a public VPN service, they offer thousands of servers worldwide, including specialty servers that can bypass geo restrictions in some countries that block website traffic. Now, many travelers will use a travel VPN router to extend their home internet address. This allows multiple devices to be connected to a personal site-to-site -site VPN at the same time without installing additional software on their computers or other devices, like a public VPN service. The best part about having a personal site-to-site -site VPN is that it uses your same IP address from back home and there are no monthly fees because you own the VPN travel router and the VPN server router. You're probably thinking, well, VPN technology is great, but can my company or an ISP detect that I'm using a VPN? Well, the simple answer is it depends on where the traffic originates from. If you're using a public service VPN, many companies and ISPs can recognize the block of IP addresses used by those VPN service providers because they originate from a data center. If you have a VPN service like an ExpressVPN or Surfshark, you can try this out by visiting whatismyipaddress.com and clicking on show more details or by going to a website like vpnapi.io and seeing if it can detect your VPN. There are other places that use very sophisticated technology called deep packet inspection. Countries like China and Egypt are two examples of places that use deep packet inspection to analyze internet traffic at the ISP level and block VPN traffic before the encryption is established. So if you're inside of a network from Egypt or China and you're trying to use just a regular old VPN, before the encryption is established, they can see that traffic and block it. So in certain situations, your VPNs can be detected, but it doesn't mean that it's totally useless. 
There are ways around these blocks like using obfuscated servers and many other techniques, but that's a topic for another day. So who should have a VPN? If you're an expat or an avid traveler or even a remote worker and you're planning to be out of the country for an extended amount of time, having a VPN is a must. Do you wanna watch TV from home like on Amazon Prime? Well, a public VPN like NordVPN does the job. Do you need access to location restricted websites? Again, a public VPN service like NordVPN will work. If you're a remote worker and you want to keep your location private, the very best option for you is a personal site to site VPN. Now I've helped hundreds of expats and remote workers find the best VPN for their setup. Whether you just want to stream your favorite shows while traveling, or if you want to extend your home internet and keep your location private, I can help. Hit the link below or in the description notes in the channel bio, and let's get together to set up your VPN. Until next time, make some plans, Monty. I'm out.